prostitutes and smoking crack in three things and filming it because that's and like is that, that is that a form of like voyeurism does that count as a fetish he's like, <laughs> i i'll do all this deviant shit but i gotta film he's like he's dude, like one of those yeah. guys that's what Stu? What's that uh, fetish call when you like to get financial finance domed? It's like he likes to get embarrassed, you know, like one of those kinds of yeah. Or those where they he like gives them control of the their bank account. He's like yeah, he's dude. like yeah, he's like I want you to fucking I want you to rich shame me. <laughs> I want you to drive up my credit card bills, bro. I, I want a woman to... who wants to be financially domed. Ladies, if you're listening, I will I will dom that credit card that call, amex will dude, be, oh my J- god jack dude. will call off his wedding immediately if you're ready yes, to like, pay for my wedding yeah, yeah I I'll, say, I'll, I'll dude, embarrass the fuck out of you straight yeah. the fuck up you're like babe what? chill you're like tell tell your tell your tell your parents to put away the money like we got i got this okay like, what's worse than what, what's more embarrassing than being financially dominated into paying for another couple's wedding? I mean, another that's, couple's wedding. <laughs> dude, that's got to get those ovaries rocking. You know what I mean? Like They call ladies, me the credit cuck. Dude, dude that, that's the credit cuck. That's, that's real, credit that's real shit. That is a real, that should be a if, vice. You're talking about a fucking one. That's a vice article. Like, w- tell us about the, the world of fucking rich shaming or uh, bank. What was, bank, what was the article? Called last week it was like help i can't stop sticking things up my ass it's like help i can't stop sending this only fans model seventy five hundred dollars a day please, please help like she keeps charging me five dollars per instant message i don't i don't Dude. even know the password to my bank account anymore <laughs> like she, she, she has completely it. locked me out <laughs> I, I i sent her a, a screenshot of my social security card and said have at it <laughs> i haven't checked my email in my wife's weeks. too <laughs> He's like my my wife's paying her too. She doesn't know yet, but she opened up a line of credit at the bank of Bank of Dubai for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't think I'm seeing that one, boys. <laughs> I get uh, rock yeah. hard every time my wife says we need to talk <laughs> and fucking, film it. I fucking bust. So the first thing dude. I do, I smoke a little crack, I film it, and I head into that motherfucker, dude, ready for an argument. <laughs> like, when the red light turns on, I turn on. <laughs> we need dude, to get but Hunter. No, Hunter, Hunter. Hunter had like the perfect life, dude. He he got to do all that shit, and plus he's got like a cushy job as like the head of like some Ukrainian gas company, and doesn't have to do anything. Yeah. Like, dude, is that what he does now? That, like, is he still? Like, well, that, no, that, that's like what that's like what everybody was like. Where'd you get all this money from? And he's like, I'm an oil executive. And everybody's like, oh, that that's that makes sense. So, so what is, yeah. so is he still off the rails right now? Or is he like bad? Has, has, I like has to imagine he's just still partying, dude. Don't you? Don't you like, like just yeah, hope I, he's I, like, you don't hear anything like, about it all now? Those. All you ever hear about is like the crazy shit he did and like the, the laptop and like you hear all this stuff, like all past tense. Like what 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 is Hunter doing now? Like has he stopped crack? I or it, I think he just stopped recording it. I was gonna say he just stopped recording. He, there's no way he just put down the crack and the whores at once. <laughs> he put down the Dude, camera. <laughs> yeah, he just he put down the has, camera. The, the hookers and the cocaine. He's like, crack. I got two hands, I got three vices. Oh, uh he <laughs> I goes gotta get rid of one. Yeah, he goes. I guess fucking crack and whores are sticking around. Dude, the funniest know. one, the funniest thing that came out out of it, because like a lot of it was like every, like what everybody saw. It was the pictures, like the videos. Like I think everybody saw that, but I think like a couple months later, they came out with the voicemails, and the voicemails are like not funny. Like they're like Joe Biden calling him at like like three o'clock in the morning, back. Like, hey, buddy, you need yeah. to stop smoking crack. <laughs> You're making this really hard for me to run for president, bud. He's like, hey, hey, he's buddy. Like, Asian uh, hookers? Asian hookers? Need, really? Really? You he's need like, some help. Come on, this I is love on you. CNN, bud. Dude, the bud is what kills me. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, I love you. Go get hey, some buddy. help. Uh, <laughs> I really tin, wish it was uh tin foil I really hunter. wish it was I really <laughs> wish it was you hunter? instead of Bo who died. Uh was, you're really making this So how did he me. die? Yeah, so how did the You're like the other, yin to Bo's yang. Was yeah. how did the hunter how did the other Biden die? Bo Biden had like a combat a disease. Oh, oh no, that's what right. was that? He was in the military then he had cancer, that's right. Yeah, cancer. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. I remember that. And then and then Hunter Hunter was like right when she died, right when he died, he was like, "Hey sister-in-law, 
Like <laughs> he's like, I got some crack. <laughs> I got I got a crack and I got, got four days off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four <laughs> days ahead of me, but nothing to do, baby. Let's I go. got a rock and fucking uh what do they call what do they call it when you you be, you want to be my hard place, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to fucking I'm trying to party, <laughs> bitch. What's it called when you're off work for a death? A bereavement. Yeah, bereavement. Like, I, got, I got bereavement and a rock. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole lot of sadness. Let's yeah. fucking. So what? What was the? Uh, what was like the thing with him? I mean, I know, I know that the laptop is a big deal. Like, this is like how. Like, I don't give a fuck about this type of shit. Like, so I don't. I, I, I knew. Like, I, I looked as far as crack and whores, and that was like tight. But like, what? What was on his laptop? Like, was it like real? Se- was it like state secrets or something? Like, what? What were I think the, like, What were people so worried about? I think the cons were trying to say it was like a pay for play scheme that he was doing with that, like that oil company, which, yeah, you know, well, and the fact so, that I guess that you can say like here, here he is recording himself in a pool, hot, a hot tub at a, at some fucking <laughs> some hot hotel. I guess he was at a hotel or like whatever he was doing in the hot, wherever he was in these hot tubs with all these bitches, dude, it was like, dude. Dude, I think like everybody was basically like, how are you qualified for this job when the only thing on your resume is smoking crack and fucking whores? Like they're like, how do you Dude. get how do you get this job? And, Bro, all in, in my it's only like, clearly you don't know a lot about the Ukraine because that that goes a long way. To my only re- job. rebuttal is is that like Donald Trump had a had had a lady in her his cabinet that I've seen get stone cold stunnered in multiple pay-per-views. You know what I'm saying? Like I've literally seen her I've seen her non sell stunners in, in wrestling and like small Trump business got stunner. Bat- Trump small got business stunner, and- yeah. yeah. Trump got a Vince McMahon's head shaved. Remember that? Yeah. He was the reason that that was where like the that was like the last time we saw the Vinnie Mac slick back, dude. The, the Trump stunner cell is the all time worst. Vince's it's yeah, even I was worse say, than Vince's, Vince's last most recent one. Cell. The one yeah. worse than the one that where he the one where he literally I mean he the, collapsed. He collapsed. Well, the best part was is like he got kicked, and like S- Steve Austin kept trying to like get him under the thing, but yeah. he's like falling backwards. <laughs> the best is when Stone when Steve Austin stands back up from the stunner, and he can't help but laugh because he's like, "That was a pile of shit, <laughs> yeah. dude. That, that was, was so bad." <laughs> well, you yeah. that fucker. So you so you're saying that that is uh, that's his was Trump's was worse. Trump's than that? stunner was very like that. Yeah, was, who's got the best stunner sell of all time, dude? Look, everybody talks about the Rock, but uh, no one sold it like like uh, Scott Hall to me. Scott Hall, he was Scott he, Hall sell was the best. He did the one where he jumped real high in the air, right? Yeah, he 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 sold it like he jumped, and it just it just looked like he exploded. Yeah, yeah, him. He I liked like, him. And, what was the Rock what? looked like? He was like break dancing and standing on his head. Yeah, like, it was too know? cartoony where he yeah. like, he flipped over his head and the legs hit the rope and he bounces off the rope. And... Did and Shawn actually, Michaels she... have a good sell? Like, I feel like sure, or sure Triple H he maybe? did because he's Shawn Michaels, right? But it's it doesn't come to mind. I'd love to see Dolph Ziggler take a fucking Stone Cold Stunner. It would be very that... cartoony. He would melt into the fucking mat. Nobody sells like <laughs> fucking him. Dude, it, he, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler's the best. They got dude, Dolph best up, dude. They really do. Well, and I guess it leads us into let's so uh before we get into like our main shit today, I guess we can go into backlash. Because dude, I mean, I, I guess the, I'm the only one that watched backlash. I know Stuart saw like highlights. I mean, I just don't know yeah, Stuart knows enough. Um, did you see any of it, Jack? Like, did you see any of the highlights? Did you not see the the returns? That, that, I've been that, in that honeymoon that, phase, getting that sweet, sweet puss. You know, don't have time dude, to be hanging yeah, with the ba- baby boy, <laughs> baby <laughs> boys, watching wrestling, <laughs> watching wrestling like I'm like I'm some kind of fucking nerd version yeah, cuck. Some, some pussy, dude, straight up, dude. <laughs> hey, pussy, you ever you heard know, of this it, fresh bro? pussy that I've known yeah. for years? <laughs> dude, it's like cracking it. Up. It's like cracking it open again for the first time, bro. Yeah, I've been it's like a stone Ziploc, cold dude. my it's puss all the time. Jack just yeah, comes dude. on screen. He's got puss all over him. <laughs> bro, I'm like sweating, bro. Jack, just dripping Jack's like it. five minutes late. Yeah, he's got sweat off his brow. We're like, dude, what, what the what, fuck? What's the do again, boys? Green screen's like half hung up <laughs> in the back. Sorry, boys. Been busy. 
Oh, but good. no, um, so dude, it was so no, was I did not see good. any of the backlash. Well, no, bro, not. the the Puerto it was in Puerto Rico, it was in Puerto Rico. That backlash, yeah. I saw a lot of backlash, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I saw so much back cash, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, that one got you good. He subscribed. That one got you good. What happened? What happened to backlash? I, I, Dude, I know that. That's the title right there, boys. <laughs> that's the title. Back cash. Oh Dude, yeah, the back cash. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch Backlash because I was too. Busy. I'm sorry. I, too, I didn't see Backlash because I was too busy swimming in Backlash. <laughs> can we can we agree the Backlash is a name for an asshole and not a pussy? Dude, or or a really, really great no. like slop metal. Since, band. since we just yeah, created dude. some new slang, is it ba- is Backlash an asshole or a pussy? What, what about the pussy from the back? That's what I. That's what I. What yeah, that's, you said. That's kind of what I thought too. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 But, dude, that, but I kept saying it. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's that fucking. I kept saying that. I was like, is that an asshole? <laughs> dude, Jesus Christ. Oh God. Yeah, that's a good one. Bat cash. Add that's up there with balloon knot. That's a good. I've never. That's really fucking good. Yeah. Oh God. I'm like crying. Well, backlash. Hey, front office, office, can, office, can you update our, our Urban Dictionary page? Uh, uh, that one? Definitely, of yeah. course, of course. Thank I'm you. on it right now. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to. I'm well, gonna need yeah. you to. Well, and, and make sure you copyright that because that is that's ours. That's a PCR original. What well, up there with a uh, uh, was it Goo Goblin Gray? Bruce Art, fucking uh, Bruce Art Bruiser. Yeah, Bruce Art Bruiser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, God, she's a linebacker, who could, dude. Who could forget? Um, oh, fuck. Guys, it's, but, um, it's not in there. Oh, just not in there? Back ash? No, oh, it's baby. about to be. Just yeah, it's about to be. Yes, sir. Right, back to, um, back to regular But anyway, schedule. so backlash. Puerto Rico. Big shit. Tight as fuck. I don't know how many people are there. The whole country. I mean, it was fucking huge. It was a episode. They had SmackDown and a pay per view there, right? And pay per view. Yeah. So they had the Smack. They had been there since like Thursday or something. Like they had That's been there. Great. It's fucking tight. And honestly, so Stuart had the best idea. We were talking back and forth. WWE just needs to go to fucking hungry areas of the world <laughs> and just have that's not, that's not where they like, have not like third world starving, but like people that. Like they'll Don't step get up the WWE that. experience. Yeah. And like not, love. they're not wearing loser Super Bowl t shirts, but like, yeah. Like they're like a step, step above, up. a step above state sponsored terrorist list. Like yeah. just yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right above Iran, right above Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Just that's places that would really have. appreciate getting a light shown on them by a pay per view. Right. Let's quit fucking going to, let's quit having blood matches over in the, you know, the Arab Emirates and shit. Let's fucking, let's go to some, like Puerto Rico. Let's go to Cuba. Go to Guatemala. Uh, Guatemala. Let's go, like, like these places where people are going to, let's go Sinaloa. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to, like, let's go right down and right into cartel country. Like, let's fucking, because Puerto Rico popped, dude. It was, so there were three returns, three big ones, and it was Savio Vega. Um, Carlito, and I saw that. I and saw dude, that he fucking spit in Dom's face like that was so. T- and and the the amount he, the amount of time he held the <laughs> apple in his mouth because he bit the fucking apple, and then he got like jumped while he was showing off fighting the fuck he and he took a goddamn. I got he took like a three sixty bite like he was like, rotating oh, the yeah. apple. So like he like, fucking was like in a one that bite. Shit. Everybody knows the rules, kind of bite yeah, like dude and. And then he gets, and then they like jump from behind. So he, and he's getting beat up. And then, uh, I guess Ray, so then he trips Dom. Ray Mysterio comes in, trips Dom, gives him the six, one, nine. And yeah. then instead of getting the, you know, the jump at the end, this, the second part of the six, one, nine was him turning around and getting the apple in the face, which was so fucking like, I was so hyped about this. Like it, 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 the pop dude, he, it, you thought it was like Hardy boys returning at WrestleMania pop. Like it was like Savio Vega was huge. Savio Vega got the biggest pop he's ever gotten in WWE. Ever, gotten, ever in his life. He was like, a it, solid mid-carder at best. Now, he's a Puerto Rico legend. Legend. Puerto Rican legend. I'll give credit where credit's due. He's great. But he was... He didn't really matter in fucking WWE. Dude, they saw the WWF. kendo stick and they were like, let's go. Like, yeah. they so, just so, did it so... Per- go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so you said Savio Vega... Uh, Vega and Carlito. Carlito, you say there was and a, then 
Yeah, Zelina Vega, who oh, okay. um, I miss who I don't even she might still be in the WWE, but she looked like she kind of looked old that night. Like she used to be with Andrade back in NXT, back when John when when it was when Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling was re- fighting those. Cl- if you have not seen the classics between him and Andrade, um, also go back and watch uh, uh, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. Those are also fucking legendary. But Andrade Gargano, and that was when he had Zelina Vega as his like uh, psych. She was dating. Um, Kenny Omega or something maybe before that like because she her boyfriend was in another uh I think he was in uh New Japan at the time or something but um but she's been around forever uh but she did she came out got a fucking it was cool because like they gave her such a standing ovation that like she broke down and cried like you could see she was trying to keep it together but then she got her fucking ass dominated by Rhea Ripley so which was cool because Rhea Ripley carried around she's like is this your girl this is your girl and then just slammed her ass through the fucking mat and just pinned her for I'm like oh mommy like Rhea Ripley is she's the go please seriously she she's like Bel Air is my top top right now. Rhea Ripley is getting like she is just so dominant. Like she's so and she's but she's a good wrestler. Like she's she's, a, great. she's officially there with me. Where she's I was like, yep, she she can be the face. I love her. Um, so she handles so Carli- the heat very well. So Carlito, like that apple bit, you have to imagine the first time he tried to tell somebody who was about to do that, they were like, "What the fuck? No, you're not spitting a fucking, you're not chewing an apple and spitting it into my face." It right? Sound, it sounds so much like a uh, Vince McMahon idea. He, they cut, <laughs> yeah, a, they cut, they cut a the, promo, and he was like at a marketplace, and some guy was like, "You need to pay for that apple," and he was like, Phew. and it was just like off the cuff, and then Vince is like, "That's your fucking thing. Like you're gonna." Is, just is that the real apples. story? No, I think that, that sounds legit. I, no, it sounds I, legit. Yeah, it that, might be, I, yeah, I have a feeling that's probably what it is. Where this was just like, you're going to be the apple spitting guy, and then it turned into his like intro. It wasn't like some music cue. It was like I spit in the face of those who don't want to be cool, dude. And it, it was, was so real. lit, like that that Caribbean music hit, and people. He came out looking like a fucking super heavyweight. Guys, exactly. just he built. Big. Um, and it was just, it was just, they just did it so right. Like the writing of the show was great. Um, His backstabber all, was good. The backstabber was good. All of them, you know, even, uh, Savio Vega, he hit, uh, um, Dom. I think he might've hit everybody with the fucking chop or whatever he did, did the, his finishing move. He still looked good. Like, obviously he didn't move a lot. Like it was a lot of like them making him look good, but like yeah. everything just fe- it seemed like everything fell into place here and like all the matches were good there really wasn't any bad matches um dude the brock match was lit like brock getting busted the fuck open from the hard way who, the the hard way and then he he was uh, uh what does that mean the, well he um, he like really got busted open he didn't like use the glass yeah, or you, do you, the, you didn't blade you didn't like actually you didn't cut yourself to like create i a, thought that was story. the old way so it is the old way but yeah, right sometimes oh guys so he did must... no so oh, he, he did it the naturally? hard way like he he actually ate shit into the term he he the, Bro. one part in the match the, he... the the turnbuckle got exposed and he fucking gets thrown into it and he actually eats shit into it and you see it like split open and like you he yeah, just fucking... a spot where you know, guy, guys in the corner he bull yeah. rushes to like you know hit him you know to tackle him in the midsection guy get that out of the way he goes in the turnbuckle and then the fucking the, the post doink right at the dude, crown dude that's fucking metal so yeah he, he, he got like a standing ovation away. after that because like he fucking because he took the pin he took the pin which was sick like um you know the made cody well and then he showed up last night on uh on raw uh, i didn't watch but i saw some of the replay today where he beat he beat the dog shit out of cody Rhodes last night and he has like the big gash you know of his eyes all black from like getting busted open and shit like he looks like that like that if that's the version that's the scariest version of brock lesnar i've ever seen like he's got the ponytail he's got this black eye he's got this big old fucking gash in his forehead that's you know healing now if you just threw the beard on him from the ufc fight back in the day remember that motherfucker where he like grew the i think he was fighting like shane carlin or something it terrifying i was gonna say that the most terrifying you said that's the most terrifying brock lesnar has ever been i just think about when he was 
like juice to the fucking gills when he was fighting Frank Mir that second time. Holy shit. Yeah, no, I definitely think he might have been bigger and scared. But like this new Brock where he's walking around in like this fucking plaid cut off and like just looking like <laughs> like he's fresh the guy that just Brock. just fresh off the farm. He just like butchered Mr. Minnesota. a fucking pig. Yeah. yeah, and he's just out to he he that the pig wasn't enough, so your ass is next. You know what is I'm that saying? That's what we call this era of Bro- farm fresh Brock. Yeah, farm dude. Fresh Brock. <laughs> he's coming for he dude, he's coming for your bat gash if he catches you yeah, in the dude. woods. Like straight the fuck up. Or he'll he's give gonna you make a you new squeal one. like a pig. Oh, one of my favorite things of all time from this show is when you said that uh, I don't remember we were talking about. You can't travel, so you can't travel somewhere with a pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you Are said you playing the classics. <laughs> That's why I can't. Have and you were like, and you were like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. You're like, dude. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, we're, blind, we're playing the classics. So fucking funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, backlash was really good. Uh, Bad Bunny, we were talking about him before we got uh, went, went live on here. Bad Bunny is the shit, best, like best celeb in WWE. Yeah, so Logan. I asked my, my I, so I, I asked my old um, manager for this, who is like the wrestling encyclopedia, Mean Gene, uh, is what his real name is Gene, but they everybody calls him Mean Gene. Um, I said, I said, so who's the better? Who's better? Is it Bad Bunny or is it Logan? Who's the top guy right now? He said. Wrestling wise, he said he'd give it to Logan just because of like how athletic and crazy he is. Yeah. But overall, like impact. wrestling, like impact entertainment wise, is Bad yeah. Bunny because like it's just like, it's like Bad Bunny is... Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg with the fucking save doing the the was, people's elbow. I, I was gonna say David Arquette walked so that Logan and Bad Bunny could run. Mister T goes above David Arquette. <laughs> well dude this, this Mr. is like T. Lit- it's it's Who? cool because like this is like actually something that like out of one out of one thing that's one thing that's always been some a staple in wrestling is this like it's cool that you know like I, they've kind of kept the tradition going i mean you go back to wrestlemania one i mean and it's mr. like T. yeah mr t you know it's it's there's always been a celebrity and and like it's it's they and they've rarely fucked it up i mean Tyson, yeah. you know, that you go back and you know, the Tyson was great with the Stone Cold and the Lawrence DX. Taylor had a decent match against Bam Bam Bigelow in WrestleMania. Lord, yeah, Lawrence Taylor. Then you had the NWO with uh Rodman and fucking uh Carl um, Malone. Carl Malone, you know, I mean, it's always kind of been pretty good. Like, you know, yeah. they've all at the uh, remember when Mayweather uh broke Big Show's nose, yeah. um, and Big Show just <laughs> ate that. Remember shit. when Shaq went top rope against Cody Rhodes? Yeah, <laughs> Shaq, big motherfucker dude. win, dude. Bro, Shaq is there. People talk about like people living lives and like living the best. Like, there's no one in the world that does more than Shaq. I don't think. Like, Shaq just does. I don't know if we. I don't know if you guys said this. I might have missed it, but Drew Carey, Royal Rumble. <laughs> Drew, yeah, yeah, Drew Carey, the Royal Rumble. <laughs> pretty good. It, it yeah. got him in pretty the good. Hall of Fame. Pretty good. Let's say I put him in the Hall of Fame. Wait, he's so. in the Hall of Fame. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yep. Fucking because, right, dude. Because of, uh, I mean, he had two moments, right? I mean, he was like a host at WrestleMania, and then he had that Wrestle the, the Royal Rumble spot. Is this Bro, the? I uh... was like, there was like an article that came out after WrestleMania that was like, "Is John Cena worthy of the WWE Hall of Fame?" I'm like, what? Who would question I like, that? Yeah, I, I was like, I, I'd be like, I probably well just, they like name it after the him. WWE. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean Hall of Fame? Like, what? Yeah, he should probably get a wing named after him. Is this is this the fucking that article the best best yeah. and worst? Oh, okay. So I did I didn't yeah. realize we had that up till just now. So yeah, we we should before so Mike, Mike Tyson was good. So let's scroll through this and then we'll get into uh we can get into the uh like the main thing we want to talk about today. But yeah, backlash is really good. If you guys have if if people didn't watch it and you're into wrestling, go back and watch it. I mean the whole thing, even like the matches that were like the 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 lesser good ones, like the where there there weren't bad ones, the the crowd just makes up for it. Like they're lit as fuck, and uh, it, like I said, that they need to have Wait, it Sydney, everywhere. Is that Sydney, 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 Walker? Sydney Walker was yeah, quintessential Sydney Walker. to the rock and wrestling connection of the 1980s when she was like she was managing uh, Wendy Richter when she was champion with Captain Lou Albano, and they were showing up on MTV together. And that that brought in way that brought in so many people, and it was just that it was 
it, it they caught it at the right time. So people were being brought in by by Cindy Lauper. Meanwhile, you have Hulk Hogan kind of ascending to full Hulkamania, and it just it turned into a crazy fucking thing. Dude, girls those, just want to have fun. What a fucking classic song. Dude, Cindy Lauper is one of the baddest broads ever. So I think uh, what's that song that she did for the Goonies? The Goonies are good enough or something like that. But the music video for that, uh, Captain Lou Albano, Roddy Roddy Piper, the music video for Girls Just Want to Have Fun, the guy that plays her father is Captain Lou Albano. Damn. How dude. do you know? Yeah. How do you know that? Because he's a fucking... wrestling. God yeah, damn. Who the fuck are you talking to? This is this is the guy. There's two people in the world that I go if I'm, if Stuart I'm about to throw it, some fucking toothpicks on the ground, knows Rain it. Man. He shouts out Mean Gene. That's he knows every he knows everything. But these are the two people. But yeah, let's Cindy Lauper is the shit. I, I like can that's one of the first people I think of. Like when I think of old school wrestling, like Maria Menounos. <laughs> that doesn't. Is count. there a so what is this? Is this just mentions or is there is this like an actual? It's not really or? like a list. No, it's just Bob, kind of Bar- Bob Barker. Did I see Bob Barker was okay. on there. Bob yeah. Euker. No, no, down below, presenter Bob Barker was equal. Yeah, well, because there was because there was two because it said the worst. Oh. I saw I saw a section that said oh. the worst. Yeah, what was Bad the worst? Oh, these are the best. Okay, so oh. let's go. Let's go through the worst. All right. All right. So the worsts are. Let's see. We, we go. <laughs> the, uh, the ball oh, family. They had Buzz Aldrin do this. That hurts. <laughs> Reverend <laughs> Al Sharpton. I remember Al Sharpton. Right, dude. That's awesome. Jeremy, Jeremy Piven. Piven. That's the guy from Entourage. Oh, the balls did it. Okay. Yeah, that well, that was when uh that's when uh Lamello dropped the N-word on and they were not a lot because <laughs> he, he he fucking got a little too excited, started fucking dropping N bombs on on he, uh, pulled the they, he went full Booker he T pulled the Booker. Harlem Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, pulled the Booker. Yeah, well they were like beating a dude up and he goes, Yeah, beat that and like fucking oh. uh, <laughs> like like he got really pumped because I think Lavar was stomping on somebody but uh Vince that was dude like, that was it wasn't shit. yeah that's some good <laughs> that's some good <laughs> shit invite them back they're like Vince, yeah. we're can- they're like they told us we're canceled he's like shit uh mm-hmm. but yeah no, i thought that it was pretty good other than them botching that snooki snooki was shit did they put her on here no i don't see snooki up here but she mm-hmm. had a yeah. bad it was uh dude they should have may younged snooki that would have sold so fucking well. Snooki was in a mixed then. tag match. I think her partner was uh, Johnny Nitro, which would make sense because she kind of looks like. Uh, and it was the versus Johnny the Nitro Miz looks like Snooki, and maybe the Mrs. Wife. She joined Trish Stat- Stratus and Johnny Morrison. That's it. So it was. Hold on. It was. Uh, Trish. It was Snooki. Trish Status. Trish, Trish Stratus, Jesus Christ, am I having a stroke? Is my whole face moving? Um, and Morrison against yeah. Dolph Ziggler and Lay Cool. Lay Cool. Which is a six person tag. I, who the fuck is Lay Cool? Lay Cool. Dude, did WWE. you guys see John Morrison knock the fuck out of that YouTuber, though? Like, that, was that was Harley uh, Lay- from uh, Epic Meal Time. Lay Cool was uh, Michelle McCool, Wait, Epic- Miss Undertaker, and uh, Layla. Wait, did you just say Epic Mealtime? The the YouTuber that he knocked out, it was Harley Mornstein from uh, Epic Mealtime. No way. The beard, I didn't the even realize guy. that. Dude, and yeah. shout out to Harley. He got in good shape quick for that boxing match. Obviously, he doesn't stand a fucking... I'm, props to him going into the ring against a guy like Johnny Morrison. But he got knocked the fuck out. Bro, when I think about those guys, I think about that like cringy era of comedy in like 2014 where people were like, I love bacon. I put bacon on everything. And that's like how people were like funny back then. I'm like, dude, I, I credit that dude with like ruining. Who is this again? Like, who is this guy? Epic Me- Remember the Epic Meal Epic Time? Meal time. Epic yeah, Meal as you said that. Yeah, I just, yeah, Epic yeah. Meal Time. Yeah. They're like, I, I heart bacon. I'm, I'm going to waste a lot shirt. of fucking bacon for this joke. So, yeah. dude, that shit was so cringe looking back. Yeah. All right, so let's go down to... Well, I guess we already went through some of the best, but I guess we can finish, finish <clears> going through those. So we had Cindy Lauper was one. What about... Uh, Front office. Alice Cooper at WrestleMania 3 with 
uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. That's a good one. Yeah, let's can we scroll down a little bit? This is the best. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we want to see yeah, it. but you're oh, we, we just can't I thought see you were still doing the worst. <laughs> no, I thought you were um, doing the worst still. I... Yeah, Mr. T's good. Mr. So we have, Mr. yeah, Lawrence Taylor, Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm trying to think of anything. Mike LT. Tyson. Mike Tyson was great. Yeah, Tyson was sick. That whole that whole like I, I had that the the um uncensored 316 austin uncensored whatever vhs and it ends with him beating uh sean michaels at that wrestlemania but like dude they really they like go behind this they, they really get into the the tyson thing and it dude that was like you, you know who tier. we forgot you know who we forgot a fucking robocop <laughs> oh god dude robocop, RoboCop that was bad walking down the fucking thing damn dude it they was, had like the was it ddp in, but Robo I can't even remember, dude. It was yeah. It Robocop was, was like really bad. <laughs> yeah, shit was fucking ass. Oh my god, 1980s fucking legend Robocop. No, it was Robocop two, so it was like 90. <laughs> Bro, yeah, that's terrible. Dude, keep going down. Let me see. Do they mention uh, Alice Cooper at all? Because that was good. No, it doesn't look like it. Plus, that's crazy. Bad Bunny. Well, they, well, I think they might they might expand on the big ones here. Let's kind of Johnny scroll Knoxville. down a little bit. Yeah, Knoxville, Knoxville, and uh, who is that? Not Sami Zayn. Him and Sam. They still kind of keep that thing going. Or like, what the, about uh, Andy Kaufman and Jerry the King Lawler? Do you remember that? The best yeah. celebrities. Here we go. Best celebrities in Talking WWE shit on him in like, real life. The top ten. Andy Kaufman, right there. He's the there honorable mention. Who did not appear in WWE, but would be near the top of this list for his extraordinary work with Jerry Lawler. Gosh. Yeah, that was that was Memphis territory. Jack, you fucking talking about him knowing everything. Look, look at you stretching the brain a little bit, Big Daddy. Don't don't drop some fucking toothpicks on the ground. I'll know how many you drop immediately. Yeah. Man. I'm I'm Rain, <laughs> I'm Rain Man. Yes, sir. Dude, I love it. Okay, so top ten, dude. They got both Bob's six and seven. I think I might move. Nah, I think that's probably good. I mean, look, I would I'm putting Logan Paul b- below Bad Bunny, but I, I wasn't was, Bo- wasn't Bob Euchre like caught on a hot mic and and at the tail end of his career being like, look at the titties and the bleachers over there, man. I would really love to fuck that work that work. And then <laughs> and everybody's was like, a, Bob, was a pig. <laughs> yeah, Bob Euchre was exactly. a pig, dude. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was so fucking great. I I would move. You like, Cindy you like this historic, legendary career, and then you just shoot it down in like five seconds just by calling out some nice tits in the fucking outfield. What a guy! Uh, Where are we putting Cindy? I would actually, I would swap Knoxville and Lopper. Yeah, I mean, not yeah. I and think and, and LT actually, LT goes down on the list. He he pulled off a decent uh, match, but there was no reason. That Bam Bam Bigelow and LT should have headlined WrestleMania. Yeah, that should have been like a fucking mid Carter. This was these. This was like ninety two, ninety three, ninety three when like WWF had no roster. Everybody was jumping ship to WCW, so they were thin on talent. Dude, that's another thing that uh, should kind of prove Bad Bunny's po- star power. I'm pretty sure it was him that just the other day. Wore the WWF jacket on TV. Hell he's yeah. the first. He's the first person. It's like the the first time that WWF like the Letterman jacket. Like it's like a it was like some sequence jacket, but it had the WWF symbol on it, and it was like, and it was on tele, like it was on TV. It was on a WWE program, so it was like the first time since all that went down so that like good. WWF like like that logo was shown on TV, and 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 they let him do it. So like, because you got to think that like. I mean, sure, anybody could try to do that, but easily Vince can be like, no, <laughs> like axe that Dude. shit. Or Bad Bunny's like, the- I'm going to go out there regardless wearing it. What the fuck are you going to do? Not put the camera on the fucking money? Straight up. The biggest, the Dude. most streamed are. I, I mean, he is literally the biggest musician on planet Earth. Huge. Fuck the World Wildlife Fund for that, though. Low key. Like, yeah, dude, nobody gives a fuck. I will I mean, never look- support the World Wildlife Fund now. Fuck that, yeah, dude. That's so. Unless stupid. they start selling, unless they start selling D, unless they start selling DX T-shirts or something. Well, I'm not. I think that that was the best marketing they ever did, though. That get the, get F, the out. F out, like, yeah. was some of the best marketing. Like that, it, it it just rolled off the fucking tongue. It was like, 
fuck WWF, like whatever, fuck that F. We don't need it. You know, like it, it was so badass, like the way they did that. They did and, it as good as you could. Yeah. And I think with a court a, order. Yeah. And it gave us the <laughs> forget the drugs, the guns, my generation. Probably the best WWE song that's ever happened. Yeah. That's a good one. I think had, on Twitter, WWE was like, what is the greatest uh, raw music? And it was like unanimous that that one was the best. Yeah, come on, dude. Duh. Quit fucking around. <laughs> or the run inside your door in your house. That was a good one too. Remember yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah that, that was a good. One. That was the other. One. <laughs> Do that again, dude. That got me fucking <laughs> no, amped, bro. You're, you're yeah, just dude, like in that, your house. I, I, just, I, please, I pulled that out. The- Bro, in your house. Yeah, <laughs> I fucking pulled fucking that. Fire, it went, and it wasn't even good the second time. Like, I fucking, I my asshole tingled for a second, and I was just able to push that motherfucker out. Like it was, <laughs> and then it was good. But it, it was just nostalgia coming out of my, creeping up my body. But Bro, I love that. that. That was probably two. That was a good one. But yeah. All right. Well, are we gonna shift this gears here? Yeah, we're shifting gear. Eh, eh, eh. We're fucking. We're into six gear now, bitches. We're gonna go into. Rev up uh, the Bugatti. Vroom, uh, vroom, vroom. Show me Bob's and Vagine. Bob's and Vagine. <laughs> um. So Jack. <laughs> so, so we have got. We're gonna fucking shift a little geary gear here. We kind of mentioned it last week. Uh, we've got a conspiracy, a new conspiracy. We need to get like a fucking cowbell or something. Whenever we have like a new, a new conspiracy ready to go. Stuart's looking. Stuart, we got a button. <laughs> Fuck. All right. We're going to preload some shit, uh, but we got a new one and this is juicy shit. This is really juicy shit. Um, so we're going to turn it over to Jack. I mean, we're obviously we're going to have a little discussion here. Uh, I don't know shit about this, though. So you're going to have to tell me, teach me. So I, I should have brought like my tinfoil hat. I think that's what we should do every time we do these like kind of segments where we all just <laughs> pop on the tinfoil hat. So that thing clip comes out tinfoils. of us talking about this. Everybody knows we're, we're just <laughs> fucking around, you know, Up the green screen too. get a, get a dry erase board. Yeah, dude. Oh, like I just like have like, what, what if behind me was just like that, like in TV when there's like a bunch of pictures with like strings. Just I was just going to say, what, so, yeah, yeah, dude, you, <laughs> you're gross. like trying to piece together all the shit. That would be so <laughs> sick. Uh, like Coffeezilla, kind of. We could just like green screen one of those behind you. Just like get a fucking yeah. Shot Dude, imagine like taking some bitch home and she opens the door and it's just like all those strings to the picture and she's like at the center of it and you're like, just, oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> I'm the lead detective in the major investigation. Oh, you just God. she just hears the door shut and like five <laughs> locks and you're like, all right, so where is the laptop? <laughs> like, where is it, it looks like a criminal thing, but when she gets closer, it's just like all of her bikini pictures from Facebook, just like, <laughs> pointing, <laughs> like connected to like a picture of her in prom with her mom. Like, oh, <laughs> oh that's fucked up. Um, all right, so so okay. let us know so about this the, Malaysian thing. Yeah, so Malaysia um, 1MDB, which really looks a lot like IMDB when you're like... That's what I thought you were saying the whole fucking time. (laughs) The the IMDB scandal, bro. No, the the IMDB scandal is saying that Tom Cruise is 5'8". I don't believe it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the IMDb scandal. But what we're talking about it, is the one MDB scandal. The one MDB scandal uh, is one Malaysia. Ain't no developed... way he's flying planes like that if he's only five. Foot. What is it? He <laughs> he's like five foot four, bro. That bitch, that bitch at five four. <laughs> yeah, one MDB. That's the IMDb. All right, keep going. So the, the the one MDB scandal is one Malaysia development. Bird Brigat or something. I Brigat, I had to look it up because I I, I kind of had to know those things. But yeah. You, you, are you are you are you gonna correct me on my <laughs> error <laughs> on my foreign language? No. Yes. Um lo- long story short, that stand that translates to limited. So it's like an LLC kind of, I think, something like that. Basically, Malaysia set up this this fund, right? That was gonna be like take them on the road to being a developed nation, maybe even host a WWE event one day, you know, that, that kind of one development. Can only hope. One can only hope. Um, but so they, they had this like fun that was supposed to get them like, you know, their economy going. And uh, they, it was like a taxpayer pension fund. It was like investments. It was going to make everybody rich. Right. It was lined with and, Saudi money. 
Yeah. So they, yeah, they got in a, they got in a business partnership with like uh, the, the Royal family of Saudi Arabia. Great people make, make <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I've been to a couple of their dinners. They're fantastic. Great. Try the caviar. It's exquisite. Try the um, wine. But, yeah. Um, so they basically, it was this fund that was state funded and a, a lot of money, billions of dollars were in this fund. And they, of course, it was the largest case of kleptocracy, which is just a fancy word for people stealing shit. Everybody was stealing from the fund, right? And and it involves a lot of different people. There's a lot of moving parts. So to kind of give you a little bit of like, a, like I'm trying to summarize this as best I can. The, the United States and Goldman Sachs, also great people, definitely want to do business with those yeah, guys. Yeah, super trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um long story short they were like helping them f facilitate some of these like big trades of bonds and essentially the prime minister this guy named joe lao and uh pos mitchell or michael from the fujis and leonardo dicaprio are like the four biggest players in this fucking game which is just a crazy story so um Essentially, this guy named Joe Lau, who was like the fund manager, he was like the mastermind behind all of this. He basically stole, I think, four and a half billion dollars um, or something, maybe a little south of that uh, from the fund and was spending it on like crazy lavish gifts. One of the things I found out that he actually and I didn't know this before we started researching this, he took out a hundred million dollars or from the fund and gave it to Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio to fund the Wolf of Wall Street movie. Well, so, With, so yeah, now so their that, production, their production so he, studio is called red granite. Yeah, dude, they did Wolf of Wall Street, daddy's home, dumb and dumber Two, And by, and by 2017 had seized royalties from all three films. J, J. Lau, whatever Joe Lau was personally thanked in the credits of arts. Joe Lowe. It rhymes. Joe Lowe. Sorry. But yeah, so he so the, so all of those movies, Wolf of Wall Street, Daddy's Home, Dumb and Dumber Two, Daddy's Home. I don't one. recall that one. Daddy's Home is the one where uh, John Cena, that one girl's like, I think it's like that he's dating that girl, and then like the dad shows back up, and I think it's like Bad Boy John Cena or something, and like he's got it's like, Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg, isn't it? More, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then the, and then the next one, it's their friends, and John Cena is the guy that shows up. That's what it is. Yeah, and then a really bad I mean, Dumb and Dumber single, sequel. It's not good. I mean, that's what you get for, you know, I think when you work with Red Granite Productions instead of Steamroller Productions, and if you guys don't know Steamroller Productions, that's Steven Seagal's movie studio. If you, if you snub yeah, the Seagal man up. like that for Wolf of Wall Street, you deserve everything that comes to you in life. So, um but the, the business was really, like, really funny because like the way they would like hide all the money was that they would make up like company names that sounded like um, real companies, but like weren't like, like instead of like BlackRock, they would use like Blackstone LLC instead of Pepsi. They'd use like super Pepsi. duper Pepsi America, number one USA corporation or something like that, you know, like something, something like that. And they were like passing money around that way uh, and like trying to hide from the auditors. But it, like apparently the prime minister got caught. That's Najib Razak. And he's already he's like the only one who's actually like gotten in trouble for this yet because the Joe Lau guy that we just mentioned, he's still on the run. He's been on the run for five years, hasn't been caught. And he's like still like balling out apparently. So what about Leo, that's pretty. That's pretty okay. So Leo's part of this is actually really funny. So obviously we talked about the Wolf of Wall Street thing, but um, <laughs> this Joe Lau, Joe Low guy, he ended up uh, gifting uh, Leonardo DiCaprio Marlon Brando's original Oscar for Best Actor. <laughs> like he, th this yeah. guy gave an this guy gave an Oscar to Leo before he had even earned one. And I, I feel like that's kind one. of like a yeah. I, I think that's like kind of a dick thing. Like, uh, Mr. Leo, you cannot get your own Oscar. Here is your own Oscar. You know what I mean? Like something like that. But yeah, that's um, fucking wild. Dude, they got 40, they racked up $42 billion in debt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they ended up, uh, what was, what I had a couple of notes on there. Uh, yeah. So Leonardo DiCaprio was like flying on jets with this dude and like going to like Vegas. And I mean, I think Leo was on Epstein's jet too. So 
You know, if you're ever mm-hmm. on a jet with Leo, you know you're probably getting into some Well, you've shit. seen him pig out a few times. I mean, we've, yeah. we've been there and done that. We, yeah. We, yeah. We've seen Leo. We know boy. what Leo's about. Oh, 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 oh boy. <laughs> he <laughs> oh, he had them roast. squealing like a pig on Brock Lesnar's farm. And so, um, long story short, uh, Leo also uh, helped. Uh, or, or, I don't know if Leo was involved in this, but apparently – he told Leo that his goal was to start getting involved in donating to political ca- uh, candidates on both sides because he not only did he donate um, $20 million indirectly to Obama's reelection campaign in 2012, Let's he, go. Also donated, he also donated to, to Trump dog via Steve Bannon. Uh, also, great dinners, great guy. Um, no. Uh, yeah, is. so that's a picture. So he gave that guy from the is Fugees. That's Joe Lowe, right? Pop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So a guy, who, a guy who was in the Fugees with Wyclef Jean, and that's the second Ross time Michelle. we talked about Wyclef on this, yeah, on this podcast. But he was the one who uh, got caught doing like all this facilitating and stuff, and he's also gone has a court sentence. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Tupac back in the day called him out for being an FBI informant. Um, this yeah, this fuck boss the Fugees. Guy. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. He, he goes, man, fuck the Fugees. Yeah, that, yeah we that was on, on the enemies. Yeah, there. Yeah, he was not a, song. yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, and and so um, this. I mean, there's a lot of fucking weird moving parts. Also, they were spending like millions of dollars on Monet paintings. They bought like tons of properties in the United Kingdom. And uh, Dude, what if Joe Lowe killed Tupac? Stuff? Bro, that was it. He was like, "You want to talk to my guy like that?" He says, "Oh, no one talked to my he guy goes, like that." He goes, "Suge Knight, my best friend." <laughs> goes, Ooh. Yeah, oh, that's fucked God. up, dude, Mister Lowe. Yeah, so. Uh, Long story short, this guy was buying like, um, pl- <laughs> apparently he bought a plane that was so expensive that when the Malaysian government seized it, they didn't have the money to adequately test the plane because it was like fifty thousand dollars at this like local airport to like test the plane to see if it even worked. Like that's the level of fucking money this guy was was on. So, but um. He flew forty two billion dollars. Like that's gotta like that's. I mean, that's like definitely. Like, you can just bury a co- some countries dude, with that. Yeah. Dude, he he paid ten million dollars just to hang out with Kim Kardashian. I like, saw that with Kim part, Kardashian. The there was like part. a few people he did that to. I was reading that earlier too. There was like all these other people that he's like pa- paid to party with. Like he's just he gave. He gave a bitch a crystal piano, which got seized by the United States government. It was like completely see through. I was like, dude, dude this, this guy's just, just one like day, one day somebody the, the fucking feds knocking your door, like, yeah, you know that piano that you knew no way was legal. <laughs> We're gonna need that. Yeah, and dude. he left it outside apparently because he doesn't. Now give I'm a looking at the, the piano. He's like, dude, fuck. Now I'm looking at Lizzo piano. with. I'm looking at Lizzo with that crystal flute, being like, maybe. Maybe maybe are you involved? You know, <laughs> damn dude. Speaking of Lizzo, did you see uh, did you see Sue Band getting all that shit for saying that, that you should? Uh, what did he say about to... Lizzo? So so the other day, I forget what series they were talking about, but he was like, uh, they were like, so do you think they're gonna like? Do you think they're up for the challenge? And he goes, they better. He goes, they better pack a lunch. They better pack a Lizzo sized lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say. Damn. I thought you were gonna say. I hope he packs two lunches, one for yourself and one for no, Lizzo. No, so so he basically <laughs> just said that they need to pack an extra large lunch and, and it called it a Lizzo oh size. God, and dude. obviously, all the, I think that's fucking hilarious. And like, but obviously, everybody's like freaking out about it. But that's it's just so funny. Such a Sue band thing to say. Damn, dude, so Leo had a Get Picasso that, that he had to give back. Oh, that's kind of wild. His gift, so still life with Bull's head, a, ca- yeah. a collage called Red Man One. He yeah, also gave the Oscar, the Oscar back. Yeah. He had to give the Oscar back to who? Yeah. Marlon Brando? I guess probably back He's to dead. the estate. The statue had disappeared from Mr. Brando's Hollywood home. Mr. Lau bought it for 600000 from a film memorabilia dealer, unfortunately from the government. When the, any post-1950 Oscars put up for sale, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences has the right to buy it for a dollar. Dumb. That's super fucking stupid. So basically somebody stole this and sold it for six hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah. So he, 35 bags of cash in 26 different currencies. 
Jesus That's Christ. Right. Tape shit. 20, there were 25 bags of gold. <laughs> 272 what? Hermes handbags and 423 watches. Everything is being is stored old... in Kuala Lumpur. You mean the place that keeps down in planes? Like That's like the least fucking secure. Those motherfuckers can't even. They are the most corrupt people. And this is like, the old prime was... minister, too. Damn. That's a lot were just of watches. Too huge uh, for us to oh, do the For a second, when I was the honestly, the airplane. This guy exactly. said he's denied wrongdoing. He's like, bro, that's all legal. What do you mean? When, when I wrong. saw when I googled Malaysia, obviously the airplane thing shows up first, and I like I got that mixed up with the other one that went missing because I was like. I was like, whatever happened to Malaysia flight, whatever. And they're like, dude, it got shot out of the fucking ground. <laughs> it's in the fucking ground. Like those dudes all got shot. I thought that was the one that went missing. I keep getting those two mixed up. Damn that. This guy didn't really. So, and I tr- he was really sloppy with his fucking money. Yeah. He zipped through a tour of the apartment. And within a day, he called, say they take it. So this lady says, dealer says, I take longer to buy shoes. Um, For $51 million. He bought that. The piano maker regrets giving him. He felt terrible. No, you didn't. It's not his way of life. Only because you had to give the money back. <laughs> well, no, actually, probably he probably didn't. The piano guy, I imagine well, says, he did. Uh, yeah, man. As he felt terrible if he had unwittingly, if he, oh yeah, if he had unwittingly accept accepted money in debt. So he's like, yeah, fuck that. I don't know if it was. It might might have been bad money. I'm not giving it back. He's like, but if it was supposed to be for the people, then sorry. Damn. Yeah, this is wild. So, so why is this becoming what? What? What is? If this guy's been on the run for five years, what is making this? Is this? Is this like? Is it about to be judgment day for all these people? Like, are the court dates coming up or something? Like, why? Why? The, why is this like Fuji's circulating now? Yeah, that's why Fuji's guy is in is in court right now. He's okay, like he's getting kind of railroaded. He dude, he came out in his inner in his uh, deposition. He he had to come out and be like, I am an FBI informant. I don't think I should be having to deal with this. I saw and then, that. And, and then they were like, the United States government was like, shut the fuck up. We don't know you. <laughs> like, stop saying this in the public or else you're going to get two bullets in yeah. the back of your head. Yeah, I was going to say. Rule of suicide. If you, dude, that is still, I love every time you bring that up because that is so funny. to me. That is like the most clear cut bullshit. Like imagine shooting yourself in the back of the head twice. twice. Uh, no, do you ever hear about what happened to the guy who uh, was at the Oklahoma City bombing? That's yeah. the fucking crazy one, dude. Uh, Terrence Yeeke, can we get front office to pull up Terrence Yeeke? Oh, uh, we're going deep. Bro, Dude, no, we got, you, yeah, we got eight minutes. No, fucking ride it out. Let's go. No, once you once you hear what happened to this guy and it was ruled a suicide, you guys are gonna be like, "Dude, that's it's worse so than funny. two bullets in the back of the head." It, bro. This dude has <laughs> he strangled in a, in a, in a, himself with a guitar it, wire. Dude, in a suicide, he stabbed himself sixteen fucking times across the arm. But, oh, come on, not. You gotta get the you gotta get the good conspiracy. Terrence Yeeke's uh mur- I, I gotta do it myself, I guess. Uh wounds I don't think our yeah our, our, I was like, we, I we do not have to those. Yeah, I don't have the same resources, Jack. I don't know what to tell you. Dude, we don't have a yeah, login. Okay. He was stabbed on the ar- arms and in the neck over over a dozen times. Uh, dragged himself across a hundred feet of farmland, put himself up against a fence, and shot himself twice in the head. And the gun was never found. <laughs> yeah, that's that's in this article. Gun, so but but it was ruled it was ruled a suicide. The stabbing is plausible because yeah, a lot of people when, a lot of people when they try to stab themselves, there's hesitation wounds. Remember when Artie he had a Lang rope tried... burn on his neck? I, I look I'm, at your I'm marks on the, his wrist. I'm saying the stabbings. I'm, pick, no, I'm picking it apart. Artie says, Lang stabbed himself like 24 fucking times. No, so here, so it says to top it off, no gun was found at the scene of his death until an FBI agent showed up and suspiciously found a gun in an already thoroughly searched area within five minutes of being there. <laughs> he says, "You fucking idiots! It's right here, right here." Clearly, it's got a pants himself. leg. Hey! You know, you know where the... <laughs> they're like, dude, that's your service weapon. <laughs> you, you know where the gun should be. Right next to the fucking body, <laughs> like yeah. nowhere else. Dude, he was anywhere. tortured, rope burns, ligature marks on his wrists, single bullet to the right temple at a forty-five Tor- degree angle. 
Fuck, so man, this is that? one of like, the worst periods of suicide I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, so fucking <laughs> damn, dude. Yeah, he was about to get a new job with the FBI in Irving, Texas. So what did he do? Damn, he was trying to blow the whistle on what on on Oklahoma on there being on there being multiple Oklahoma bombing that that uh that what's his name didn't act alone. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I thought that that picture of the guy up top. I thought that was that Chris Dorner guy. That Chris Christopher up. Dorner. You can't corner the Dorner. You can't corner the Dorner, baby. <laughs> I mean, you can corner them, but then you burn the whole building down. Dude, oh my god! I is that going to be which, which one? Which one is our title this week? Is it back back gash or is it can't corner can't Dorner? Can't corner the Dorner. Back, yeah. yeah, it's got to be back. What, gash, what was yeah. the one, the one? Oh, they did one because they can't did can't Dorner or can't corner the Dorner because Four Chan also did uh, the George Zimmerman, the guy who shot. Um, Trayvon, Trayvon Martin. A, t- yeah, they said can't zim zam the flim flam. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> God damn, <laughs> bro. They had all the all the fucking rhymes for that, but can't fucking, corner the door. Can't corner the, the door is the best one. Remember they had the video game. They had that game. Bro, the like, guy yeah, who yeah, made the yeah, he made a mod of Doom. And like you basically, and, and like you don't survive. It's just how long you survive before like you inevitably yeah. burn in this building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's only, yeah, I just got to see how long you can last. I remember that, and then I remember the Columbine, the Columbine video game. game. Yeah, yeah. Super Columbine, oh, R- Super Columbine RPG. Yeah, I think I, that's I, right. Fuck. I never played the uh, the Columbine one, but I have seen the other, the Dorner one played. Uh, you ever play the JFK one? JFK Reloaded? I have not, no. <laughs> You're the shooter? There's, uh, my buddy just sent me a video that was like, uh, when you're high at a bowling alley, he goes, it's like these bowling alley uh, animations are out of, out of, out of fucking <laughs> pocket. And one of them was like, yeah, it was like the, the book bowling pin and like the, the JFK six, yeah. six floor book depository. <laughs> yeah. And when he shot JFK, it was like strike. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking so it was just so fucking cool. Like, Damn. It was like the bowling ball was the shot. And like JFK was the bowling pins. <laughs> it's just so good. It's like when these bowling animations are out of pocket, <laughs> so but it's good. true. Like they're so, so you go there and this bowling animations are so fucking wild like if you sit there next week look you're like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> like, oh. but yeah this is so so this is uh th- so this is this because of, of of deaths and i guess i don't know this, well, the, this joe well, I, you know we should probably you wrap up yeah. the joe yeah, as the you say is stuff. there much more to say about that i mean like no so we got, i mean like this guy's he yeah he paid paris hilton and megan fox to party with him which you know kind of sounds like a, a weeb Thing to well, do. it sounds like you now what we in, need to in, do is, like incel stuff with money. Now that like we've been in incel, had I mean, a bunch of money. Him. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, bullet. that's that's Gangnam style. Um, <laughs> fucking, yeah. yeah. If now that we've talked about it, we you know we'll, we'll, all we can do is we'll we'll keep an eye on the fucking the 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 Fuji trial because I'm I'm interested in that. You know, I I, I want to know like of course a Fuji fucked it all up. You know, so I I I, I definitely got to we'll keep it on that and and i i didn't know anything about this hopefully joe low gets caught i mean i guess he are we rooting for joe low on this show this pop culture we have we're definitely i mean what connections do we have to malaysia it's a funny story he's still on the run okay I, so I'm, a, I'm pro joe low we're pro what, joe low this is a fucking nerd who did what like dozens of banks do every fucking day so yeah, right yeah fuck them go joe go, go joe, joe. go joe go joe yeah that's that's fucking the shit so so hopefully i was gonna say hopefully he gets caught and we can talk about it but hopefully he doesn't get caught and like we'll just keep updating you on how long he's been on the run or you know whatever this is tight though i mean we'll try to get him on the pod for sure we'll try to get him on the pod i mean if we can get him on the pod dude like a julian assange type thing like in a fucking <laughs> he's just like in a, i wish we, w- we could have gotten john mcafee when he was still alive <laughs> Yeah, we still, well, we really got to get Yiddy lunch. I was just telling my buddy about Yiddy lunch at the fights on Saturday. Yiddy lunch, he was like were the, huge fans. He was like, bro, he's like, I got, I go, do you got TikTok? He's like, I, he goes, I deleted it. It was redundant. I go, well, if you ever, I go, uh, you, well, you need to get back on. I said because it's Yiddy no longer lunch, redundant. Telling, t- he is telling you who's got the best steak and the cleanest buttholes, dude, and it is fucking worth. A I don't know this this person. He literally this guy so Yiddy is lunch, up in Detroit, and his he has the greatest. It's he only reviews the food from strip clubs. Oh yeah, so you guys were talking about him. Yeah, 
Yeah, and he he breaks down like the quality of the food, the quality of the girls, the bathrooms, the specials, the drinks. Like makes makes sure that it's like a full, well rounded experience for the boys and girls. Yeah, Yiddy Lunch, baby. He's our next Yiddy guy. Lunch, he, he's got to be. He's got to be an interview. We will interview Yiddy Lunch somehow before he um, goes even national. If, right now, even if we have Detroit. to, if we have to travel and meet him for lunch. Like, what if he said, I'll interview with you guys, but you need to meet me at a Detroit strip club for lunch? Can you imagine? I was like, which he, one? I'm in one right now. He, he, <laughs> anytime he shows which one, himself, he's wearing a balaclava. Yeah, he's got the, yeah. our, first, our first two interviews on this show are people who demand to wear balaclavas. Just demand, yeah, like they're not even real. They're going to be like, Did you, these aren't even real people. You guys are just interviewing friends. That's the front yeah, office. That's, <laughs> that's Jack pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah. Jack pre-recorded. Um but yeah, well, you know, uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on this and all conspiracies because that's what we do here. Uh, we will always bring you the juiciest conspiracies. Well, Jack, for sure. Jack, Jack came to us last week and, and was like, I've got some on the hook. So we took a week worth of looking into it and I didn't look into it, but Jack did. And uh, Jack, it sounded pretty tight. Nick, Nick it sounded, tight. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have time for that bullshit. Yeah, no, I just I was too busy <laughs> trying to I was too busy trying to trade for uh the front office's little brother's first overall pick went unsuccessfully so um but um yeah i i definitely think that this is something we need to keep an eye on and like i said we will keep bringing you these gcs conspiracies so i didn't even Research know about Oklahoma this Oklahoma city, City one. At it. yeah the, i know the conspiracies yeah. on that i didn't know about this guy though that's wild like i really thought that one guy who took the two bullets in the back of the head was the wildest government sui like suicide ever this tops it yeah. for sure <laughs> yeah. jesus christ um, his last words were as soon as i shake these feds that are following me i'll be back and we'll go to dinner damn damn Wait, yeah like the last feds, words of a guy who's just about to kill himself <laughs> get suicided damn that's wild well you guys got anything else you guys want to add for the the free people out there i guess no damn go lakers I'll be, I'll, I'll be up in st louis dude a little over a week Still, oh yeah you, babe, got we got... Comedy, you got a comedy show you got to plug you're, you're gonna be down at the the funny bone in st louis uh, no actually june, I I june 12th what, through this, the 15th this saturday night i will be at the blue room in springfield missouri dan soder there you, you go. You're nice. opening for you're opening for Dan Soder. Good I wish. job, dude. No, I'm gonna go see. Uh, I got like front row tickets to go see old Danny Sode's Crackle Crackle uh, off of Showtime's Billions and the Bonfire on Sirius XM. I saw, I saw him when he was in Nashville, dude. He he's so funny. He's great. Funny. I'm I'm I hate that he left the Bonfire, which is the only reason I still had a Sirius XM account. But uh, look how much money he's, he's saving you now. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, like six ninety nine a month. But yeah. I hate that he's off the show. But that means that he's going to be probably doing more touring. He's probably going to be doing more projects. So he'll actually, because he's been the most underrated comedian for a while now. He is the funniest comedian that sh he should be up there with the best. But now, now he can probably do it. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll so be funny. a good show. Be yeah, we got we got you coming up here on the we got interrupters, baby. That's what I'm really stoked for. Interrupters, interrupters and. Frank Turner. Uh, Frank Turner, I love it. Yes, sir. Cannot wait. Um, Guys, on exciting. Saturday, uh, on Saturday, May, what is it? Front office, what's Saturday? Like this Saturday, the 13th? Yeah, Saturday the 13th, yeah. guys. I will be at the grocery store at noon. Um, if you guys want to come out, <laughs> just, uh, you know, I'm going to be You guys want to get your favorite conspiracy memorabilia signed? What's the yes, grocery store? If somebody comes up. Come In to Publix Chicago. by my house. Publix, yeah. Publix. Hell yeah. Publix yeah. is nice. We don't do that Ingles trash check. Let them know. No, dude. I don't do Kroger. What do I look like? Some kind of peasant? <laughs> yeah, right. get a Deerberg's <laughs> pussy. Get a Deerberg's and get a Schnooks. Pussy. Price cutter. Yeah. Be, we didn't ask. Wrist cutter. <laughs> no, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Price cutter and Aldi, baby. Dude, out uh, by, uh, out by my, uh, we, uh, my buddy is in house Springs where he used to live. We all know him, but I'm going to name drop him here. He, he had a price cutter and next door there, <laughs> there was this salon called the U S hair force. And anytime I talked to him, I was like, bro, are you going to, 
Is he going to enlist or like <laughs> what's going on here? Like, you ever get bored, dude? You just go and enlist the old U.S. Air Force. <laughs> it's just shit. the most white trash house springs thing in the entire fucking world. And then across the street, there's abandoned buildings. So like, you really get the full, the full <laughs> feeling. Air uh, Force and Air Force will both take advantage of you wanting it to further your education yeah, as an 18 year old. They, they both benefit <laughs> from you signing your life off. Yeah. But well, good shit. Well, this is what episode forty six, right? Forty six, baby. Forty six. We got four more to fifty. We we actually talked about putting together like a highlight reel for you guys. We've done nothing for that, so you may or may not get a highlight reel for our our funny fifty. I don't, you know, we don't fucking know what we're funny doing here, but 50. funny fifty, dude. Uh, but forty forty five that forty six episodes. We're did you just there. come up with that uh, just now, dude? Funny fifty. Holy shit. Funny fifty, dude. dude wait, dude, dude, dude a hilarious cool. hundo. <laughs> Yeah, the hilarious hundo. The ha ha hundo. The ha ha hundo. The fucking... I hate you guys so much. Oh, well, man. yeah. But anyway, make sure you guys are subscribing to our shit. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube, please, because that's what helps us. So watch our shorts. Watch our TikToks. That's where we're posting the most. Um, hit the bell so you get subscribed. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, go fuck the Blackhawks, by the way. Uh, they won yeah, the kind of Bernard fuck series. The lottery. Uh, lottery and... Fuck uh, Jackson Holmes. I'm about, I'm about done. Yeah, I'm about done with sports. So, but on that note, you guys, uh, this is going to be a science podcast. Uh, you guys have a good week. We'll talk to you guys next week. Episode 46, Pop Culture Rehab. Fuck.